we are Robin and Steve. In the last episode, we sailed from Kettering, Lutrowita, Tasmania, to Opua, Aotearoa, New Zealand. In this, our boat Rakali. The trip took us 14 days, and most days were pretty uncomfortable because there were swells coming from different directions plus substantial wind chop. But we did learn a lot and we're glad to practice some skills in open ocean. We took turns doing three hour watches, unless someone had to climb on deck, in which case we'd both be awake. For instance here, I've let out the sail and Steve is putting in the third reef. We also got practice heaving too. It's like going into attack in slow motion until the sails are backed and the ship is balanced to slow down and create a slick that takes the power out of the waves. Notice how smooth it is this side compared to the other side. This was useful as squalls kept coming through on the last two days of our trip. Being a rough 1700 nautical mile trip, things break, connections go loose. As we shot across the Tasman Sea, our to-do list kept growing. Sitting on a boat on waters five kilometres deep became our new normal. Soon we approached land, and by now both of us felt like the world had tipped to the right. We'd not only adapted, but compensated. The quarantine team checked every nook and cranny on our boat. We were now free to go vegetable shopping. Once rested, Steve got into the to-do list, checking wiring of the windlass and the starter motor switch. then just general leak prevention and pump maintenance. Here's a noise we got sick of during our passage. <coughs> the sound of the bilge pump alarm kept ringing in our heads. But bilge pumps are useful. Ah, the sound of a pump doing its job. Here's a quick demo of the ins and outs of a check valve. One way. Doesn't go. Let's go. So get this, our boat is over there and we're not on it. We we're finally on land and could use our legs. On our first full day off the boat, we walked 18.8 kilometres from Opua to Pahia and back on a gorgeous coastal track that weaves its way along the coast and through forest. Being an international check-in point for boats, I thought Apua would be quite big, but it was Pahia that was big. Big for tourists, with all that comes along with that. We took advantage of this to get my phone going, over a meal on a table that didn't tip. A trip to the public toilet in Pahia is a celebration, and so it should be. We made our way back at full tide with backpacks filled with vegetables. As we enjoyed the quiet of our deck, a sailing race was going on all around us. We had some days of chores, like catching the bus to Kerry Kerry for banking, and then doing two weeks worth of laundry at the laundromat. And then we were ready to explore, once we topped up with diesel and fresh water. We weren't the only ones going to Russell, we paddled in from one side and cruise ship guests were boated in from the other. We pulled out our kayak just beyond the boat club and then met this eel before taking some back streets to Russell. Kororurika was an important port for the Maori and later for the Europeans. This is the flagstaff. As is often the case, when Europeans decide to increase their territory, they stuff up. In this case, the Maori fought back and won. A lot has changed since then, but it was well worth the climb to check out the view and to imagine how it once was. Now things got difficult. So many islands to choose from. Many of these islands have been under the care of the Department of Conservation since 1979. Oh look, a monarch butterfly. This area's wildlife is making a comeback. We're on Motua Rohia Island, 
one of seven islands of the eastern Bay of Islands that have been pest mammal free since 2009. The short steep walk to the lookout is gorgeous. We were intrigued to take the underwater snorkel trail, but arrived at low tide, so this was a good chance to get our bearings. When we returned to our boat, there was actually a May Day relay going on. Five people had been clinging to rocks once their boat had sunk. Thankfully, all were safe and we could enjoy the sunset and once again be thankful that our boat floats. In the morning, we paddled ashore. When we went ashore, we met a family of oyster catchers. We found the lagoon where we were to snorkel. We certainly did see a lot of fish. The lovingly placed information plaques were a little bit hard to read. Next time we'll take a brush. Another day, another island. This time it was Moturua Island, with its 4.6 kilometer walking track around the island. After being at sea level for so long, albeit a bumpy sea, the ups and downs of this track were just what we needed. This beautiful view is from atop a World War II defense structure, built on top of a Maori defensive lookout or pa. Motudua Island is another one of the islands being restored through Project Island Song. This group are working hard to get rid of pest mammals and give native species a chance to make a comeback. We definitely saw many birds and also weeds. There's a lot to do. Next day, it was a trip out to the bay. These dolphins were massive. This is the famous hole in the wall rock that people can sail through. But we'll do that another time. For us, it was off to Uru Puka Puka Island. Another of the islands rich in bird life. Pied or variable cormorant. Tieke or saddleback. Although we visited this beautiful bird hide, we actually saw the birds in other places. But what a nice spot. New Zealand fantail, piwaka waka. Brown teal or pateke. Pūkeko or swamp hen. Chorus cicada. Most of the islands here have kind of a reverse mohawk with a bald strip across the ridge, sometimes still shared with sheep so it's not pristine wilderness, but it does make for a great view. I wonder if the sheep appreciate the view. The walking tracks on Uru Puka Puka Island go high and low. From more Maori pa with great lookouts to beautiful beaches. To sheep paddocks to tourist traps, where we admit we stopped for lunch.
from up here we could see where we'd arrived in New Zealand, what seems ages ago now, and have a look at what we've not yet explored, before returning to our humble boat. It's not that humble, but it's all relative. Thirty-five knot winds were forecast, so this was my opportunity to do a little bit of rope. My first practice since leaving Australia. After this, the kayaking and walking stopped. We were boat bound due to strong winds. But we'd had a thorough look at this island. And now the weather is clearing. We're ready to move on. Join us next time to see where we go. <laughs>